Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 6, Lesson 2, Solving Multi-Step Inequalities. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve multi-step linear inequalities. Let's learn solving inequalities involving more than one step. In the previous lesson, we learned all the different things to solve one-step equalities, such as adding to both sides, subtracting to both sides, multiplying to both sides, or dividing to both sides. They follow the same rules and procedures as solving for equations. When there's more than one step, it also follows similar to equations. So step one, isolate the variable terms on one side and the constant terms on the other using addition or subtraction. Then step two, multiply or divide to isolate the variable. If we have to distribute or combine like terms, we would also do those ahead of time. Example one, apply multi-step inequalities. Our real context here is publishing. Susie wants to self-publish her comic book. One printing company offers to publish the book for a $220 flat rate plus $3 per copy of the book. Her maximum budget is $400. Part A, write the inequality. So we're gonna write our inequality for the cost of this. So in words, there's a $220 flat rate plus $3 per copy, and then she can spend at most because her maximum budget is $400. Putting this as an inequality, we would say 220, they're only gonna pay that once, there's no variable, plus, $3 per copy, so 3 times x. How many of our copies? We would multiply it by 3. Is at most, so she cannot spend more than that, so it's the less than or equal to symbol, and then 400. Squishing that all together, we end up with 220 plus 3x is less than or equal to 400. Now, to solve and figure out how many copies she can do, we would first Subtract 220 from both sides. That gives me my x variable term by itself on the left. Then to solve for x, I would divide both sides by 3, and I would end up with x is less than or equal to 60. I do not need to flip the inequality sign because I did not divide or multiply by a negative. So Susie can have up to 60 books printed while not exceeding her budget. So if she did 60, she would spend exactly 400. If she did 59, she'd only spend 397, and so on. As long as she doesn't do more than 60, she's good. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and write the inequality that represents the situation. For now, just write the inequality. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For the inequality, you should have wrote 10 plus 5x is less than or equal to 40. So it's a $10 membership that you buy once. He can buy tickets for $5 each. That's where your x is. That word each or per usually helps you out. And he has a total of $40 that he can spend. Now, solve the inequality. Pause the video again and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that x was less than or equal to 6. Or if we wrote it in set builder notation, maybe we should have that x with the line and our brackets. So all values of x when x is less than or equal to 6. This is another situation to be careful of when it's asking you for possible solutions. Can you buy negative tickets? Definitely not. Can you buy half tickets or decimal amounts of tickets? No. So this is one of those discrete functions where you can only buy certain values less than six of them. So really just zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Example two, write and solve a multi-step inequality. Consider the inequality, the opposite of a number divided by two minus 17 is less than seven. So translate that sentence into an inequality. Translating just means you're writing it into math. So we're gonna pick out our words here. 
I'm going to start with I see is less than. I know that it's that simple. Is less than 7. So at the end, I already did that part. Is less than 7. It doesn't say less than or equal to, just less than. The opposite of a number. So that would mean that it's negative of a number divided by 2 minus 17. What would this look like altogether? So negative x divided by 2, take away 17, is less than 7. Sometimes it helps to say it out loud or continue to read it over and over as you are writing it so you get the correct translation. Now let's solve. So to solve this, we would first add 17 to both sides to get that x closer to being by itself. Then it's negative x divided by 2. So I would have to multiply both sides by 2. Finally, it's really just negative 1x. It's not positive x. I still have to divide both sides by negative 1. And because I divided by a negative, I have to switch the inequality sign. So my final solution would be x is greater than negative 48. Now let's graph that on a number line. So looking at the symbol, it should be an open circle at negative 48. And if x is greater, the greater numbers are to the right, so my arrow would point to the right. Example 3. Solve an inequality with the distributive property. So solve this inequality, then graph the solution on a number line. Going through, we can see we have sets of parentheses with a value outside. We need to use the distributive property first before we can use our addition, subtraction, multiplication, division properties. So distributing 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 11 is negative 44. Other side, 2 times x is 2x minus 2 times 4, so 2x minus 8. I'm going to simplify this side. I see there's a minus 12 and a minus 8. They're both constant numbers, so I'm going to combine them and get negative 20, bringing down the rest. Now I have a variable on both sides and a number on both sides. So I need to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. I'm going to add 44 to both sides so I can start getting the x by itself. And when I do that, I would end up with 24 and then still the 8x, still the 2x. Now I'm going to subtract 2x to get it away from the number because I also have a variable over here. 8 minus 2 is 6x and then the 24 bring down. Finally, divide both sides by 6 x is less than or equal to 4. I do not have to flip the sign because I never multiplied or divided by a negative. Now if I need to graph it, so I said that x was less than or equal to 4, so my closed circle, again I can see the symbol right there, it doesn't change, closed circle at 4, and I want the numbers that are less, so my arrow would go to the left. When you're solving these inequalities, you also can actually just use Desmos to help you out. So whether it's a simple inequality like 4x is less than or equal to 16, it can help you to determine the answer. So if you notice, when I typed in an inequality, it gave me a colored or shaded region. Notice the line is dashed. That's like a open circle, not colored in. I can see that from the symbol over here. If I switch it to greater than or equal to, now notice the line is no longer dashed. It's solid as if it's colored in. Then to find your answer, just click on the line wherever it crosses the x-axis. This crossed at 4. So that's where you would put your circle. And then what direction is the arrow going? Just look for the shaded area. It's shaded to the left. Your arrow would go to the left. So if I want to use this on real complicated problem, such as the one we just did, I can see where does it cross? It crosses at 4. It's a closed circle because the line is solid and my shading must go to the left, which is what we got for our answer. So to be honest, if you can learn how to use Desmos and the connections between this and the graphs, you shouldn't get inequality solving wrong. The problem is you need to know what you're typing into Desmos, and usually that comes in the format of word problems. 
as long as you can write your equation or inequality from a word problem, remember, you can also use Desmos to help you out. Check your understanding, solve the inequality, and graph on a number line. You may use Desmos to help you out or to check your answer. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have got x is less than or equal to 3, which means you're drawing a closed circle at 3 with your arrow to the left. If you did it on Desmos, you would end up with a solid line at 3, and it would have been shaded over here. 